The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. This worldwide program is coming to you this moment at the very speed of light by the medium of radio. Radio is one of the mass media which Professor Marshall McLuhan has called extensions of humanity, extensions of man. In his classic book, Understanding Media, Professor McLuhan wrote, Radio contracts the world to the dimensions of a village. In India, radio is the supreme form of communication. He writes, the teenager withdraws from the television group to his personal private radio. And because of radio waves, no country in this world is closed to new ideas today. On any given day, more people hear the teachings of Christ today by radio than heard those teachings during the first three centuries of the entire Christian era. Consider that for a moment carefully. Any day, that is during any 24-hour period of time, more human beings on this earth hear the message of Jesus of Nazareth than heard that message during the first 300 years following the life and teachings of Jesus, there is absolutely no substitute for this technology of radio as an economical, effective means of reaching the peoples of this earth with spiritual truth. Radio penetrates every barrier, reaching the obvious urban audiences as well as reaching where no other media can go, including television. Radio can reach the entire planet. Thank God in this moment for radio, which is reaching you in this instant with the love of God and the love of humanity. As I begin my second quarter century of broadcasting, I remind us all we may have taken radio for granted. Some skeptics have the erroneous concept that when television was born, radio then died. Such is simply not the case. According to the current trend, over three times as many radios are sold as television sets over one year's time globally. One independent survey shows that half of all the truck drivers in America listen to radio in their trucks for three hours or more every day. The same is true of car radios. Several researchers recently went out to parks, beaches, and picnic grounds, and they discovered that 40% of all the groups at these outdoor locations had portable radios with them, and what's more, over 75% of those sets were in use, tuned in at the time of the survey. Not only is radio everywhere, people listen to it. The importance of hearing, the hearing of spiritual truth, is illustrated enunciated, emphasized, clear back to the ancient Hebrew scriptures. For example, in Isaiah 34, verse 1, listen to the importance placed upon what you hear with your ears. And I quote, Come near ye nations to hear, H-E-A-R, to hear and hearken ye people, let the earth hear, H-E-A-R, and all that is therein. And again, in the 10th chapter of Romans, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? H-E-A-R-D. And how shall they hear without a preacher, without a speaker, someone teaching the truth? End of quote. The world urgently needs in this hour to hear spiritual truth. For over one quarter of a century, that is what this radio broadcast, the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast, has been proclaiming. Spiritual truth, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, and the vibrant, vital victory which you can find and achieve in your life in faith, which can transform first your life and ultimately the very world itself. For doubt sees the obstacles, but faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night. Faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take a step faith soars on high. Doubt questions who believes. Faith answers I. Said Jesus of Nazareth, have faith in God. Faith. Then take the time to pray, to develop your inner spiritual life. Listen to this great old Sioux Indian prayer. Great Spirit, help me never to judge another until I have walked in his moccasins for two weeks. There's an old Chinese prayer, God, reform thy world, but begin it with me. 
The philosopher George Herbert prayed, O God, thou hast given so much to us, now give us one thing more, a grateful heart. And listen to the great John Wesley's famous seven-word prayer. In just seven words, listen to what he prays. O God, let us not live to be useless. Refuse to live a useless life. Dare to give your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place and who will bless you and keep you and above all will use you, will make use of your time, your talents, your energies, your love, your compassion, your concern and your care which this world urgently needs. That is how God is transforming this planet by transforming individual people and you can be part of of this great spiritual renaissance. If you will give your life to God, then after you have heard spiritual truth, go on to become a student of it. Statisticians report that every 60 seconds, 100 more people on earth learn to read. At this rate, it is expected that within the next 25 to 30 years, illiteracy could virtually vanish from this earth. But what is there that's worth reading? What are you reading? Knowledge without character is a hollow shell. What are you studying? What are you filling your mind with? It makes all the difference in the world. Your character is what you stand for. Your reputation may be based on what you fall for, what you believe that was wrong. You may have had a bad start in your life, but you do not have to have a bad ending to it because God's love makes adequate provision for everyone. God's love makes provision for you. There is still hope for your life. There's a joyous potential, a tremendous possibility for your future. After all, who and what are you? What is your self-concept? What's your self-definition? Abraham Lincoln said, character is like a tree, reputation like its shadow. The shadow is what we think of it. The tree, however, is the real thing. Dwight Moody said bluntly, character is what a man is in the dark. What are you in the dark? Who are you really? Do you have a ringing resonant sense of your own reality and your own value in the universe? Jesus 152 times in the New Testament of the Bible calls God by the name Father. Again and again he calls God not merely my Father but your Father. In Jesus' most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, 16 times he refers to God as your Father And seven times he refers to man as your brother. You are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of the living God. It is written in Psalm 27, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Remember, man gives advice, but God gives guidance. God will guide your life daily if you will seek for that and God has good things in store for your life the father of a four-year-old little girl had just given his daughter a birthday gift and she was beaming smiling so happy she said to him you're a good good daddy to give me this birthday present and he replied thank you honey but remember that I am a good good daddy even when I don't give you a present even if I don't give you what you want In precisely the same way, your faith in God may have been robust and strong when your life was young and you were showered with health and happiness and finances. Now perhaps you're older. Your faith may have been wavering. The reason you're ill or lonely, the bills are piling high, and deep in your heart you're wondering, is God really still there? Is God a good God? Does God care? And the answer resoundingly is yes, God is is still a good God, a great God, a loving God, your father and your friend. God still cares about your life. God knows every time a sparrow flutters to the ground, God knows every hair on your head, every anxiety, every fear, every dread, and God has power, peace, and new joy for the living of your life. But without the fire, the gold cannot be purified. Without the difficulties in your life, you will not grow spiritually. Never judge your life by any one experience through which you might chance to be passing. Just because you feel sad today doesn't mean that all the rest of your life is going to be sad. That is not your verdict. Just because you feel life's a bowl of cherries today doesn't mean tomorrow's going to be the pits, that all of your life will be trouble-free or that it won't be trouble-free. Neither one, because life is a mixture of failure and success, pleasure and pain. Everyone has problems. But you have a God who is greater than your problems. 
Think of that. Marinate that in your mind. You have a God. Your God is greater than your problems. Whatever your problems may be, your God is greater than those problems. Keep your faith in God intact. On the wall of a cellar in Cologne, Germany, where a number of prisoners were held during World War II, there was found this scratched inscription. Quote, I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. I believe in love even when feeling it not, and I believe in God even when God is silent. Have faith in God, for it's always darkest just before the dawn. The purest gold does go through the hottest fire, and God has a wonderful will for the living of your life if in faith you will cling to God's will. Someone asked a famous newspaper advice columnist if there were one single dominant theme that ran through all the letters which she received during a year. She said, yes, the one basic problem people have seems to be one form or another of fear. Human beings are afraid. They live in fear of losing their health, their wealth, their beauty, their jobs. Yet always remember, faith is stronger than fear. Dr. William S. Sadler, the famed psychiatrist, said the only known cure for fear is faith. It is written in 1 John, verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment, and he that fears is not made perfect in love. The scholars interpret that from the Greek in these words. There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist where there is full, complete love. But full-grown, complete, and perfect love turns fear out of doors or expels it and it drives out every trace of terror. For fear, I'm still quoting the translation from the Greek, for fear brings with it the thought of punishment, and so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love, is not yet grown into love's complete perfection, for there is no fear in love. Faith is fear which has said its prayers. And if you'll live in faith in God, you will live fearless of life and fearless of death. Said Jesus, fear not, be not anxious, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I have come that you might have life, he said, and have it more abundantly. I have come that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. In this moment, if never before in your life you have done so, dare to claim this living love of God, God's will, plan, power, and purpose for your life, and all things will begin to be for you, brand new beginning here and now. Write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America.